Okay, so let's continue our discussion of momentum conservation with this example. So we have two train cars. They're moving in opposite directions. They collide and they stick together. And the question is, what happens after? Are they stopped dead? Are they traveling to the left afterwards? Are they traveling to the right afterwards? Um, let's look at the problem picture a little bit. Um, we know that the train car that's moving to the right has a mass of 1,000 kilograms, and we define it to be moving in the plus x direction with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. Um, train car B is moving to the left, and which we define to be the negative x direction, so it has negative velocity, negative 0.9 meters per second right, in the negative i hat direction, and it has a mass of 1,100 kilograms. So train car B is moving a little bit slower, but it's also a little bit heavier. Okay, so what's going to happen afterwards? Um, so in solving this type of problem, we need to think about what concepts we can use to solve the problem. And looking at this problem, we know nothing about what the force of A and B is or the force of B and A. We have no idea how long that collision is going to occur for. Um, we don't know anything about the energy of these objects. We don't know the energy is conserved. Right? There's definitely going to be a lot of sound and things that happen when, when these stick. Energy is not going to be conserved here. So what can we do? Well, we can recognize that this is a system where there are no net external forces. Right? If I consider the system as a whole, there's a force of car A and car B and a force of car B and car A, but there are no net external other forces. Right? The weight is canceled by the normal force in each car. So in the system as a whole only has internal forces, no external forces. That means momentum of the system has to be conserved. Momentum being conserved means momentum is constant, so that means that the momentum at time one is equal to the momentum at time two. Right? That's the most kind of fundamental um, equation of momentum conservation. And so using this equation, we can write down what is the total momentum at time one, what is the total momentum at time two. Well, at time one, I have two objects moving. I have object A moving to the right, I have object B moving to the left. So I just write down, I have the momentum of object A at time one, plus the momentum of uh, object B at time one. Add those two together, that's my total momentum at time one. At time two, well, these two objects have stuck together. Right? So they're now just kind of one object moving together with some velocity. So for now, I'm just going to call that total momentum at time two. I have equations for each of these things. Momentum is mass times velocity. So the momentum of object A at time one is the mass of A times the velocity of object A at time one. And I'll move from using a vector to an x-coordinate here because I only have motion in x, so I can just break this down into a one-dimensional problem and just talk about this in terms of components. Okay. The momentum of object B at time 1 is just the mass of B times the velocity of B at time 1. And then the total momentum at time 2, well, I have the two cars moving with some velocity that has to be the same because they're stuck together, and their mass is now a combined mass of A plus mass of B. So momentum is mass times velocity, and that's just what I've written down here. And so I know the velocity before the collision. My only unknown here is V2. What is the velocity of this stuck-together train car after the collision? So I can solve for that. Right? I solve for that as so, symbolically, and then I can plug in for the mass of A, the velocity of A before the collision, the mass of B, the velocity of B before the collision, making sure I properly get the minus sign in here, right? because velocity and momentum are vectors. We have to be careful with our minus signs. And again, plugging in the mass of A and the mass of B. And when I plug this all in, I get 0 0.25 meters per second. All right, so that tells me that this train, which is two cars stuck together, is moving to the right after the collision in the plus x direction, since this is positive. And I know the speed at which it's moving, it's 0 0.25 meters per second. So that's just a nice example of how we can use momentum conservation to solve a problem. So just as a little bit of a reminder here, momentum conservation is a new tool that we have to solve problems. But again, we have to learn to recognize when we can use this and when we can't, right? It's not always true. It's only sometimes true. Momentum conservation is true if there are no net external forces on the system, right? So in the last example, I was able to use momentum conservation because I define my system to be train A plus train B. But if I do that, then I can ignore the force of A and B and the force of B on A. Those are internal forces, not external forces. And so I only have an internal forces that are... Right, all the external forces are canceling, um, and so momentum is conserved. If I was to just consider train A, momentum is not conserved for train A, because B is going to apply a force to it. Right? 
there's going to be an impulse of B and A. It's going to change the momentum of A. A is definitely not going to be moving the same speed after the collision as before. So its momentum is definitely going to change. It's not constant. Same thing with B. If I consider B to be my system, the momentum of B is not going to be conserved. It's not going to be constant. It's definitely going to change because A is going to hit it. Right? B is going to actually switch directions after this collision. Um, so we have to be careful about what we define our system. But if you can recognize that you have a system where you have multiple objects, but the net external force on the system is zero, then it must be the case that momentum is conserved and you can use this concept to solve problems. And so let's just go through one more quick example. An apple falls from a tree and feels no air resistance. As the apple is falling, which of these statements remains true for the apple? A, only its momentum is conserved. B, only its mechanical energy is conserved. C, both mechanical energy and mom momentum are conserved. D, kinetic energy is conserved. E, potential energy is conserved. So maybe pause the video, think about this for a few seconds, and when you unpause, I will click to the next slide here. Okay, so the answer is B is the only true statement here. Right? When an apple falls from a tree, its momentum is not conserved. Right? There's a net force acting on the apple, the force of gravity, its weight, and so it's going to accelerate. Its momentum is going to change. Its speed is going to change. It's going to have an impulse acting on it by the force of gravity. So its momentum is not conserved. Right? If I was to instead consider as my system the apple plus the earth, well, the momentum of that giant system would be conserved. Right? The, the earth is going to move slightly towards the apple. The apple is going to move towards the earth. Um, but the momentum of the apple is not conserved. The energy of the apple is conserved. It starts off as potential energy, and that turns into kinetic energy as it falls. Right? And so we can transfer from one type of energy to another, such as the energy is constant. Um, C is false because A is false. D is false. Kinetic energy is not conserved. Kinetic energy is not constant. It starts off with zero kinetic energy. As it falls, its velocity increases, and its kinetic energy increases. So it, its kinetic energy is increasing. Potential energy is conserved. That's also false. Right? Its potential energy is decreasing as it falls. Potential energy depends on your height. As your height decreases, your potential energy decreases. So I hope that can help kind of demonstrate that there are times when you can use energy conservation, times when you can't. There are times when you can use momentum conservation, and times when you can't.